Welcome back to Make It With Tim. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to put up a towel rail in your bathroom. My wife and I recently repainted this bathroom and as a result, we took down the handrail that was in here and now we need to put it back up. So, I've got this cupboard and I've got this radiator. I want to hang my handrail one third of the way between the two. So, I'm going to measure. It's 57 centimetres, so a third of that is 19 centimetres. So I need to mark it up. I'm using masking tape here, partly so it's easier for you all to see the marks that I'm making on the wall, but also I'm not then drawing all over the wall and as it's low stick I can just take it off when I'm finished and it won't damage the paint. The towel rail we have is 60 centimetres from centre point to centre point of the wall brackets. This radiator is also 60 centimetres, which makes life easy for me. All I need to do is go straight up from the side of the radiator and I'll know exactly where the centre of the bracket needs to be. As you can see here, I'm using my set square. Yes, I'm leaning the set square from the radiator to the wall and therefore the mark is not going to be exactly accurate due to the discrepancy of where my eye happens to be when I draw the mark, but for the purposes of this it's going to be close enough. This particular towel rail has a wall mounting plate and then the bracket that the pole slips into. So I need to fix this to the wall first and then I can put this on top. Now I know this radiator is exactly level because I put a spirit level on and checked. When using a spirit level you need to make sure that the air bubble sits between the two lines. That way you know that everything is level. I want to make sure that these two points I've marked on the wall are also level. So I'm going to take the towel rail itself put it on the wall with the two marks and then put a spirit level on top. My marks are very, very slightly out, so I'm just going to remark them. Once I'm happy with where the centre points are, I can take my wall bracket and draw exactly where I need to draw the holes. At this point, it's a really good idea to check all your markings and make sure they're exactly where you want them. It's better to check twice and draw once, rather than ending up with a great big hole where you don't need one. Before you drill, you should always check to make sure that there's no electrical wires or pipe work in behind where you're going to put the holes. This way you don't end up with any nasty surprises. I know that this wall has no electrical power in it and no pipe work. The pipe work all runs underneath the flooring and the electrical power also runs under the flooring and comes up the wall. Also this wall has no sockets on this side and there's no sockets on the other side either. If you're not sure, it's always worth checking with one of these devices. Basically, it senses where there's AC current. Some of them also sense where there's metal work or stud work as well so you can check for pipes. So, I've done my checks, now I'm going to get drilling. I'm going to be using a masonry drill bit. The drill bit that I'm using for the raw plugs that I'm going to put into this wall is a 6mm drill bit. I've also put this bit of tape on marking the length, that, the distance that I need to drill in so that my screws can go in their maximum depth. The holes are now drilled. I can peel off the masking tape that I had on there for the markings. Just be very careful as you peel off the masking tape that the paint doesn't get caught on the masking tape and start peeling with it. As you can see on the bottom hole it just started to catch so I peeled from the bottom and it was all fine. That little rip in the paint is going to be covered by the fitting so it's okay. Next I put the raw plugs in the holes so that the screws had something to bite into. As you can see these went in with a bit of pressure from the thumb. Sometimes you need to just give them a gentle tap with a hammer. Once the raw plugs are in, I needed to attach the wall plate. 
here I'm using an impact driver just to speed up the process of getting the screws in. With the wall plates mounted, it was then time to attach the towel rail brackets. The brackets I'm using has a tiny screw in the bottom that needs to be tightened to attach the bracket to the wall plate and hold it secure. It's worth checking what your fixture has. Some of them have allen keys, some of them have very tiny screws. So just make sure you have the right tool for the bracket that you have. Once the towel rail was all done, it was time for me to put up the toilet roll holder. I went through exactly the same process as for the towel rail. You can see I put the tape on the wall, I've measured to make sure it's the same height as the towel rail, and then I've started marking everything out. I then checked to make sure there were no wires and started drilling. Once my holes are drilled, I took off the masking tape put in the roll plugs and then it was time to attach the plates to the wall. Again I used the impact driver to drive the screws in. It was just a lot faster than trying to do it by hand. I then mounted the toilet roll holder and put a toilet roll on. The towel rail and the toilet roll holder are now ready to use and the bathroom is one step closer to being done. So there you have it. You've seen how I put up a towel rail and how I put up a toilet roll holder. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Please leave a comment below let me know how you get on and that way I and other people can learn from your experience. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell and that way you can see all the other videos that come out in the future. Now all that's left to say is take care, have fun and God bless.